Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Cans. Cans. Uh, today I received no question, but I wanted to talk about something that is, well, it exists in Orthodoxy. And the phenomenon that I will describe isn't particular to Orthodox Christianity, it isn't particular to Christianity in general, it isn't particular to religion. It exists in all spheres of life. However, it tends uh, to multiply in areas that we hold most dear to our heart. It is uh, in areas that people get, you know, sort of angry when they discuss. And that is the concept of fake news, or as we used to call them when I was young, lies, you know. So, uh, I wanted to read something that I was forwarded by a friend of mine, here in Rafter refer referred to as... Milos, uh, the other guy from Bible Illustrated, and a fellow church mouse. Uh, so he for forwarded me a screenshot of uh, someone's message with an icon of Saint Seraphim of Sarov, and uh, this is what was written underneath. He will be arising soon. The sisters say that ankles are regenerating on his bones and that flesh is reappearing. Pictured above is Saint Seraphim of Sarov, and he prophesied during his lifetime that God will resurrect him before the end of the world, so he would spread orthodoxy throughout the world. Doubt. <laughs> you know, uh, this is a typical case of what I personally refer to as forward spam. That is simple lies that people tend to forward uh, to other people without investigating them further. Um, Generally, sometimes they don't even pause for a moment to think about it. Did Saint Seraphim of Sarov ever prophesy something like this? I'll be honest, this is the first time I've ever heard of anything similar. And even if he said it, I would still have a lot of doubts. Now, uh, this, of course, is only one such example, even maybe one of the more extreme examples of such a this. But there are others. For example, a lot of you Orthodox Christians have probably encountered um, uh, have probably encountered that that the king of the Ivory Coast was baptized into the Holy Orthodox Church and it is followed by an image of someone who appears to be a sort of uh, you know African chieftain or of some sorts uh, talking to a Greek monk in an Orthodox Church uh, now uh, only an easy Google search would reveal that Ivory Coast is a republic, there are no kings, and if you took a moment to dive in, you would find out that the king of the Ivory Coast in question is actually a chieftain of a tribe that lives in Ivory Coast. Okay, so um, there is a lie in the categories, maybe something was lost in the translation, perhaps the chieftains are called kings, and a king became the king of Ivory Coast. Um, there were a lot of these fake news during the pandemic. I think that they have died down, thank God. Uh, these are uh, these include, but are not limited to different saints appearing and giving all sort uh, all sorts of faulty medical advice. Saint Nicophorus the leper was the most famous one, uh, and I'm sorry, but hanging basil or thyme on your door, fr door frame won't protect you from COVID. I mean, they're healthy, but not <laughs> not that healthy. And I think that um, Elder Ephraim of Arizona was also a frequent uh, target for these lies. Uh, there was one particular vision, if it ever happened, and if it was uh, Elder Ephraim, claiming that everyone who receives uh, the vaccine will die within five months. Well, I'm still standing. A lot of people, to be quite honest, I don't know anyone who has taken a vaccine and has died. And full disclosure, once the vaccines have become available, I also don't know anyone who hasn't taken a vaccine and has also died because by the time by that time we were already experiencing Omicron, which is considerably weaker, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to turn this into another COVID video. We, we all... All of us had it up to here with COVID. Um, I also wanted to share how I was a victim uh, to this fake news. Uh, I got forwarded 
a video <laughs> that claimed <laughs> that <laughs> there is this monastery in Bulgaria that only has uh, one hero monk and one nun, that is priest monk and a nun, and they lived very far remote, but they had one sparrow which went, and that sparrow which went is a bear, a huge bear, uh, and that hero monk and him has become friends. I took that video, I put it on TikTok, I took my time to put subtitles to this video to follow the ones in Serbian. And then my friend Vladimir messaged me, hey, this isn't a Bulgarian hero monk, this is actually a famous grizzly bear, you city boy, uh, which, by the way, do not live in Bulgaria, uh, and he's relatively famous, and that guy is actually speaking English. And yes, when I first saw the video, I heard that they speak something, but I didn't understand the language. But when I put the volume to max, yes, it was English, and I deleted the video, and yeah. I'm not really better than most people regarding this, clearly. So, uh, a long time ago I watched, uh, watched this documentary that dealt with uh, miracles uh, of God, and it was done by a Pentecostal who mostly focused uh, on, like, Pentecostal miracles. And I would say that a number of them were fine. However, at the very beginning of the documentary, I did a quick search, I can't remember what the name of the doc documentary was. Uh, there is this pastor who re uh, sort of gets gold dust uh, on his um, suit uh, when he preaches, and on occasion people would find tiny gemstones around him while he preached. And the question that the movie maker of the documentary honestly asked, in all honesty, was why would he fake it? Because he wants to deceive people, he wants to become popular, because he wants donations, there is a plot, uh, he wants, he, uh, there's pride, there's a plethora of reasons why people would do this. And sadly, sadly, us religious people tend to be that gullible when it comes with miracles and deceptions that come from our own faith tradition and denomination and so on. However, that does not mean that deceptions do not happen, that there are actually people who do these sort of things. Um, now, uh, I want to also list an example of uh, a respectable abbot of a monastery on the Holy Mountain. Uh, his name escapes me, even if he didn't, I will not say it because I don't like to name people. However, during a lecture, this abbot claimed with all honesty, that uh, the European Parliament of the European Union has decided that there are too many monks in Romania and it has decreed that Romania need, must reduce the number of monks. Um, that is not what European Union does. Uh, there is a lot of other ways you can critique uh, the, the European Union for their anti-Christianity, and that would be fine. Um, a person who actually works in the European Parliament and is a pious Romanian Orthodox Christian has even said in a comment of this video, this is not true. Nothing of the sort was said, decreed, or what have you. Now, here we have three options what could have happened. The first one was that the abbot simply lied. Honestly, I'm not really pro this. Uh, I, I simply do not believe it, I do not, not buy it. Uh, the, and the second one, the second one was that he was lied to, and the third one, which, is, which I found most probable, is that it developed as a gossip by the time it came to the abbot. So, for example, you have like these typical secular people in European Parliament, the MPs, and someone asked a Romanian MP, how many monks do you have in Romania? And he or she says, I don't know, 20,000, for example, I have no idea. And that person says, oh, wow, that's too much. And then uh, somebody, that person relays, oh, they said in European Parliament that uh, it is too much. Somebody then uh, that relays uh, the European Parliament, he said it's too much monks, then it becomes 
they keep decreed to reduce the number of monks in Romania and so on and you get something that is simply untrue. Now, Christ, Christ is not only the way, he is not only the life, but he is the truth. And as Christians, we need to showcase that truth, even when that truth uh, isn't flattering to us and our cause. And being truth-loving is an amazing witness of Christ himself to non-Christians. Um, I do not want to say that people who forward uh, these fake news are necessarily stupid. I don't want to say even say that they're necessarily malicious or something. And there are a couple of reasons that I do not consider too bad when it comes to this. The first is this one that I have just said. It's gossip that got, gets out of hand. And by the way, gossips and information in general tends to get out of hand. And thank God that we have not one but four Gospels, because it is a great check and balance precisely to that. Um, the other, uh, the next two reasons are very similar. They are fear and concern. Well, what if St. Nicophorus really did uh, appear and, uh, uh, I, um, and I, for example, contract COVID because I didn't hang basil or thyme or did not eat this or that plant or whatever, you know? Again, these are, you know, sort of noble causes. Sometimes it is just fear. Well, I don't want to be disobedient on St. Nicophorus or some, some, something similar. Uh, there is also a big part in laziness. For example, Googling information that can be easily searched out, like Orthodox, uh, Ivory Coast, King conversion, and you immediately get the whole story, which is still great, but not as great as uh, they would make it out to be. And finally, uh, one of the major reasons why people send out these information is triumphalism. Wow, isn't our religion great? Oh wow, this happened that does not happen in other faith traditions, even though it does, even they have fake news too. <laughs> so, um, triumphalism is a big driving forward uh, behind this. Oh, our emperor will come from this stone statue and liberate us from the Turks. Oh, this specific bell will announce the Dread Judgment. Guess whose emperor is preventing the advent of the Antichrist? It's ours, what are the odds, you know? And so on and so forth. So, uh, all of these tend to carter to our national and religious pride. And there is there are those aspects of this pride that are fine, that you're happy, that you're Christian, that you're thankful to God. But there are also times when they're not, when they're simply pride, you know. After all, Satan fell because he was prideful of his role as an archangel. He wasn't taking pride in his own evil or something, you know. He prided about something good and it caused his downfall. That is why we need to be on guard on this. Also, regarding this, uh, I want to mention uh, what are some of the bad reasons people create and forward these. And I hate to mention these, but they are, they do exist. Uh, one of them is trolling. Somebody simply makes a jokes and for wits and giggles sends it out, you know, just to see how gullible people are, to see how long the joke will persist in religious circles. Uh, maybe it's even direct sabotage. Maybe it's people of, you know, non-Orthodox faiths doing this. Uh, it is that is to be more precise, uh, anti-theists and satanists uh, might do this with extreme fervor. At least religious people tend to sort of think, well, my god or karma will sort of punish me if I lie, but that does not absolutely have to be true. Remember, Christ being the truth means that the end does not justify the means. It never does. If it did, Christ would tell us that we should lie if we are Christians when we are caught by our persecutors because we would do so much more good if we were let go and then continued to spread the gospel. No, the end does not justify the means. Sometimes uh, it is the case of simple monetary gain, especially when it comes to miracles regarding certain monasteries. Again, there are those. I am aware of some cases, they are painful, they come from people who sought out miracles for their loved ones and then it turns out that 
the supposed miracles never happened and that the people who claimed to have experienced such miracles never existed. The, this is a horrible thing. I think it is, I honestly think that it, it is one of those few truly hell damned worthy uh, lies that men can say. Um, uh, a long time ago, I wrote an article about Chione Sugihara, who is a Japanese diplomat. He was a Baptist Orthodox Christian, not really practicing, uh, who saved from 6,000 to 10,000 Jews from the Holocaust. And this article was published in the official gazette of the Serbian Orthodox Church. And they knew the editor at the time. And he asked me, did you tamper with this story? And they're like, no, I... I investigated it. I even contacted uh, Sugihara's son uh, if he had any comments and so on. Why? Well, you know, because uh, sometimes we would publish these stories and the authors would embellish them. I was shocked and saddened by this. Uh, he was, the editor was saddened at that fact as well, but he was glad at least that the, that article was fine. I've heard often, I have not verified this, so full transparency, that uh, a lot of translations of some saints in Russian are heavily edited, most especially uh, writings of Pseudo Dionysius the Arapagit. I don't know how to actually pronounce that in English, sorry. Uh, so that there are a lot of text that is simply left out. I also have a friend, and at one point he wanted he uh, he printed a book uh, by Saint Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain, and as he was putting the book, uh, and he simply left a book for everyone to read in the chapel where I serve, and he said, "Oh, by the way, I removed all of the all of the references to the tall houses." And I was like, "Now I know that I'm not really pro." Toll house, to say the least. I expect, uh, I am not anti toll house, but I'm very anti how people deal with them online, turning it into a dogma, and even telling people who really aren't all that into it that they must not convert to Orthodox Christianity if they do not accept this supposed dogma. However, I gave the talking of my life to that friend, like. Who are you to change somebody's words? If he said all houses, they should remain. Yeah, but they're not true. Regardless, you know, it's not up to you to decide. You literally change what Saint Nicodemus has said. And maybe, you know, in five, ten years or however, somebody will... Wait, Saint Nicodemus never mentioned all houses. Well, he did. You just don't know he, he did. <laughs> you know? So, uh, I think that... Things like this are pretty horrible. Some of them are more damaging, some of them are less damaging. Uh, and my final advice for all of you, all of my audience is, never put corn flour directly into the piece that you're boiling. You will regret it dearly. Bye.